Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the E-Tribe. This is Isara Metis, your host, and I cannot tell you how excited I am today for the guests that I have for you. And those of you who've been listening to me for a while or that know me on a personal level knows that I'm a total data freak. Like, I am all about making data-driven decisions in businesses. I, I, I'm so into this that in my previous company, Last Minute Travel, that we built a $100 million travel business we did not start writing code before we figured out how we're gonna track every single thing in the system. And later on, that allows us to do amazing magic with magic, which helped us get to $100 million later on. So obviously when I had the opportunity to talk to somebody who's a real expert on data tracking, gathering, measurement, decision-making process, I was extremely, extremely, excited. So my guest today is Chris Mercer. And if you never heard the name before, or he goes by Mercer, so it'll be easier. So Mercer is a world expert on performance and measurement market and marketing optim optimization. He's the founder of measurementmarketing.io, where he has multiple courses from beginner, done for you, done with you, everything you want in order to get companies to really understand what's going on in their businesses and specifically in their marketing, so they can make better decisions and grow their business. Brilliant. How do I track the way people engage with the little snippets of that article? So it's a video, it's a quote, it's a link to the article itself. It's just different ways to represent the data in a social media friendly way to send people to read the actual article. Right. So how do right. I track it? So it's a, it's a great question. What people are generally trying to do with Google Analytics is they are trying to connect the traffic to the results from that traffic. And that's what you're asking too, right? With the yes. specific results I'm getting from the specific traffic source. In order to ask Google Analytics this, Google Analytics needs to know, what do you mean by traffic? And that's where UTMs come in. So for those that are not familiar with that phrase, it's just little parameters in the URLs that when you click on any of your emails, you start looking in the URL, you'll see UTM underscore source equals something and UTM medium equals on something. And those are just little identifiers that are there for one single purpose. It is for Google Analytics. So when those parameters are in that URL, Google Analytics sees that when it comes across and it goes, oh, this came from Facebook or this came from Instagram or this came from Twitter or this came from an email right? One of the emails that you sent. And so it knows exactly the source of the brand of the traffic, right? The source of the traffic. It knows the type of traffic from that source. It knows the purpose of the traffic, right? All of these things are things you, uh, you put in there and you can control, which is great because now you can very specifically say to Google Analytics, I want to know about my emails. And if email is creating a certain result and analytics will know exactly what you mean by email because you identified it with those little UTM parameters. Okay. So that's sort of the context of why you tag that traffic. Now there is one report in Google Analytics, something we call the super report, because if you just use this one report effectively, it will answer so many of your questions. And that is a report called the source medium report. So when you're in Google Analytics, you can literally, there's a little search box in Google Analytics. You can start typing in source and you'll see source media report. You can click on it. It'll take you directly to it. In that source media report, it will identify, the first column identifies all those different traffic sources coming in. It'll be the traffic sources that Google knows about, things like organic traffic and the traffic that comes directly to your site or, or that may be untagged or traffic coming in from other sites. And it will also have all those different UTMs. So if you want to know about you know, your Facebook social traffic or Twitter social traffic or email or podcast traffic, all of that stuff can be measured in Google Analytics and they'll all be listed in that column. Now, to answer your question about engagement, if you go over to the right of that, you'll see how much of that traffic you're getting from those different sources. And then to the right of that, you will actually see engagement where it'll talk about something called a bounce rate, which is Google Analytics rough attempt at trying to figure out how many people were actually interested versus just came to the site and then left, right? Didn't really do anything, but they actually started to engage. It talks about time on page. It's got some, some session times, a number of pages in the visit. So it gives you some rough ideas of how engaged that audience is. And then to the right of that is kind of my favorite part, which is the results part. And it's like, here are the results. And that's where goals set up. And those two things, UTMs is, is where you start because you got to tag your traffic first. But the goals really cap it because that answers the question you, you were specifically asking about is, well, how many people 
interacted with the video? How many people maybe scrolled halfway down? How many people even saw that page? Well, you can set goals for that. And then you can say, okay, based upon these traffic sources, let's say all of my social media traffic that I'm sharing it, which of the different sources is more likely to get somebody to actually land on this page or watch the video on this page or interact with this part of the page because you've got a goal that's associated to it. And that's how you tie the traffic to results in Google Analytics. The article name is Keys to Success During COVID-19. That's the name of the article. Yep. I want to post it on LinkedIn with a video of the guest speaking on that topic. And I want to measure that traffic. What do I need people... to put on the different UTM parameters? So there's, there's up to five that you can use. So we'll cover each one of those. So the first is, is the source, right? The source of the traffic. And the way you think about that is the brand name of that traffic source. That's the first thing, brand name. Second is what is the type of traffic coming from that brand? Third is the campaign. It's really the point of the traffic. Why are you sending them there in the first place? So let me ask a question about mm -hmm. what do you mean the type of traffic? The type of traffic will be whether it's maybe social traffic or whether it's uh, organic traffic or whether it's email traffic coming through. It could be paid traffic coming through because there's a difference on social media, right? You could share something on social media that's, that's really not boosted or paid for in any way that you're just organically putting out there or there's the traffic that you pay for. And you'd want to know is it my paid traffic that brought them? Or was it just the stuff that I did that was just social traffic that I did out there that wasn't boosted? So you can see the difference between those two styles of traffic uh, coming back to your site. And so that's why the type is important. So they call the medium. And then what you could do is you could put the location of where you put stuff in the content. So there's, there's two other UTMs. We talked about source and campaign, right? The brand, the type of traffic from that brand, the point of the traffic in the first place, the purpose of the traffic. Then there's term and content. So term is like where you could put the headline of the ad. So that might be where you identify what the headline of the ad is, or if it's a subject line of an email, something like that you could do. And then content is where you put all the differentiators. So you might do something in the content to identify that says, oh, location dash profile, right? And now you can create channels in Google Analytics that might say, I want to define profile pages as a channel and I want to see all of, and that's defined as anything in the content that says location dash profile. And that's how I know it's profile pages or retargeting. Like for example, we'll do ours. We'll have the content, we'll put in the audience that we're focusing on. And it's not necessarily men 25 to 54 that we've done that too in the past, but it's, it's really become more, is this a cold audience? Is this the audience that we've Ooh. built for offsite traffic aware? Is it the audience that's on-site traffic aware or on-site brand aware? Is this the audience that's already a lead, right? Is this a retargeting campaign? Is it a cold traffic campaign? So we put that stuff in those UTMs. Content is the perfect place whenever you're thinking about like that, like with an email in particular, right? It's like, well, because a popular request will get, well, I want to know if it's the autoresponder or if it's a broadcast email, put that in the content. Because that way you have like, in our case, we use Infusionsoft. So it'd be like Infusionsoft email is the type of traffic from Infusionsoft, right? Yeah. And the purpose might be for the measurement marketing academy or whatever the program is that we're pushing them toward. And then it's subject line is the term in content. We might put, oh, this was an image because we wanted to see if the image was getting more clicks than the thing. It's, and that's really defining some very specific questions that we're going to ask about the performance of that click. Um, and in our case, it actually has the location of that email in the system. So I know what campaign number it came from. I know the sequence in that campaign. I know the email number in that sequence. So I know if it was day three of the autoresponder for the new you know, toolbox members or something that caused the sale because it, it's like all identified in that content. We rely very heavily on that content. That's, it's the most underutilized that's ETM. That amazing. Is. The only thing we do with this is like when we A-B test stuff and I would put the same thing on social media. One has a video, the other one has a quote card. Mm -hmm. I will write video or I will write quote card. And sometimes I'll actually put the link to the resource. So I know which resource I actually used, yeah. but that's it. I never yeah. thought of this is actually free text. I can do whatever I want with it. Exactly. <laughs> we string them together. So we'll have like AUD and then dash the name of the audience. Then we'll do dash, dash, dash to separate it. Then we'll say like LOC dash page, right? So we know it was on the page and then dash, dash, dash and whatever other miscellaneous stuff. And the beauty of that is it goes to your point earlier. You were saying, well, I want to know this specific thing about these specific things, right? That's what the content is really there for. So my UTM for the email traffic, the content stuff looks very different than my Facebook traffic does, right? And that looks very different than like Google paid ads does because it's, those are very specifically defined for that specific click coming through. 
so we can pull out whatever we need. But we will tie them together. So if Google Ads is doing retargeting and Facebook is doing retargeting, they both in the UTM content have retargeting so that I can build channels and, and things like that and say, how's my retargeting traffic doing versus something else? And it's important when you do UTMs because that gives you the ability to drill down. I can't tell you how many times, you know, we've been teaching a, a course or something and, and I'll say, well, here's my Facebook traffic. And you can see here, it's getting a 7% opt-in. That doesn't seem very good. Well, let's dive into it because that's just all my Facebook traffic. But now we'll yes. dive into specific. Well, look, turns out most of this traffic wasn't designed to get leads. So why would I think Facebook's not doing a great job? Let's look at yeah. the traffic that is designed to get a lead. Oh, look at that. 45% opt-in. Pretty good. Now we can go into this and we see, oh, retargeted is twice as likely. So now my marketing team basically knows exactly what to do because of the power of UTMs and tying them to the retail. How do I keep track of all these parameters and how do I create them in a way that that doesn't consume half a day of work every time I do something? Yeah. So what's, what's the magic tool trick system that you use? I'll give you something everybody can do no matter what, just on a post-it note, right? And it's strategy is actually very simple. All you do is you think about three columns, right? And you list all the traffic sources out. What are all the different brand names that we use for traffic? Don't think about the types of traffic. Don't think about the purpose of traffic. It's, you're just answering that one question. We use YouTube, we use LinkedIn, uh, we use Facebook, we use Google, we use our Infusionsoft or whatever your system is, all those different choices. That's it. It'd be probably less than 10. Then you go, cool, that's done. Next, column two. What are all the different types of traffic we have coming to our site? Regardless of brand, who cares about the purpose? When I answer that, it's a completely separate question. What are the different types? Well, we have email traffic. We've got uh, paid traffic that we do. In my personal case, we have podcast traffic from podcasts like this that we measure. Sure. Right? So we list all the different traffic types. Put that away, right? And it's very important to keep these completely separate. Then you answer that final column, which is campaign. And campaign is really, what's the point of the traffic? What is the product or service that they're supposed to take advantage of? Again, it'll be less than 10. Oh, this is for the certification program. Or this is for private guided training, but that's really it. Like there's not other purposes that we have. You write all these down completely separate. And the reason that I'm emphasizing that, write them down completely separate is because what most people do is they go, instead of vertically like that, like all the traffic sources, then all the types, then all the campaigns, they go, well, we use Facebook. We use Facebook paid. We use Facebook paid to promote for Father's Day. And then they, they do it horizontally. Now you have hundreds and hundreds of these things and your head's yes. like, I have no idea what's going on. So it's actually a lot simpler if you just deal with all the sources first, then list out all your mediums first, all your campaigns first. Typically it'll be less than 10 in each one of those. And then everything else is just a combination of those. You just stitch them together. That's it. What goals do you set for your website and why? And then how do you actually set up the goals, like the practical step you have to do to go there? Figuring out how to set them up, not that hard. There's lots of places that can do that. But why, what should a goal be? How would I use it? What actions does it allow me to take? That really is the hard part. It's more of the strategy side. So the way that we think about it is we have this ACE model, right? So ACE stands for aware. So first you set a goal when they are aware of the journey you want them to be aware of, right? Whatever that okay. is. C is when they complete that journey. And then E is engagement. And then you're measuring as they engage along the way. Sometimes it's one step, sometimes it's many, depends upon the journey itself and the, and the tech involved. So as an example for us, we have the Measurement Marketing Academy, right? It's like our sort of our flagship training program. So when they come into the Academy page, we fire an awareness goal that we say, okay, now you're now aware of the Academy as a product. They are now aware of that journey. Cool, that's first step. They have to be aware of it before they can buy it. The complete, right? The C part of that is where we set a goal when they've hit the thank you page, essentially, right? When they've completed that purchase. And then E would be something like the cart page when they engage along the way. And the reason that we measure awareness, you know, were they aware of it? Did they complete it? And did they engage along the way is because it'll show you that drop-off. Again, it's that pipeline, right? The customer pipeline, that journey that's happening here. So I can see, is it a problem where I'm not getting enough people to become aware? Because maybe my funnel works just fine. Like for us, I know eight to 12% of the people are going to go to the cart of those. We should have 40 to 45% complete, right? And actually purchase. That's, that's what our numbers will show. And I can forecast that, right? It's a very important step. We always forecast what our results are going to be and how we're going to get those results. So I can measure for that. Now, the, the way that you use it in that source meeting report, 
remember the source media report to sort of visualize it is you got one column, basically that first column, it's all the different traffic types of traffic and sources of traffic and everything else. It tells you what's coming down and identifies the traffic. And then way to the right is all the results, all these different goals. And now pretend you've got an awareness goal and completion goal and engagement goal, let's say. Well, as you start to flip this report around, you can say, well, show me just the aware, you know, people that are completing the awareness of the academy. The report sort of adjusts itself and you start learning things like, oh, Google Organic is really good about making people aware of the page, but it doesn't do a good job of closing them. It doesn't go to, you know, of completing the journey, it doesn't do a good job of engagement. However, my retargeting campaign that I'm doing on Facebook does a great job of getting them to engage. And maybe it's the Google ads campaign or in our case, email that does a great job of completing. And now when you do that, when you have this little ACE model with your goals, you're measuring, you know, which traffic sources are really good at aware, which traffic sources are really good at completing the journey, which traffic sources are really good at engaging along the way. You start to have that thing that everybody keeps chasing, which is I need to know if I should be doing organic and then Facebook and then Google ads, or is it Google ads and then Facebook and then organic? And everyone's always trying to answer this question, right? Well, that report essentially starts spelling that out for you and says, oh, well, here's more than likely, here's what's happening. People love finding you on Google organics, do whatever you can to get them there. Then you retarget those people, right? Get them into Facebook. Facebook brings them back so you become a lead. And then email closes the deal. And you will sort of see that clearly spelled out. Now, remember, we didn't just look in our report, say, gee, I wonder how our marketing is working. Because that's a very dangerous spot to be. Yeah, that's where everybody is. So I get it. People are like, I ask that all the time. I'm like, I get it. I did too. But think about how dangerous that is. Yes. How's, where'd all that money go? Like, that's what you're asking. What else, what else in the world do we do? Right. Instead, what we do is we say, here's how it's supposed to be working. Google Organic should be creating a lot X amount of awareness of those. Our Facebook campaign should bring create this many leads out of that. And then our email should close this many people out of that. And we measure for that. So we're constantly asking, is our marketing working as it is supposed to? Now, in that process, if we ever see something that looks weird or different, it'll pop out because it'll break the pattern, right? Remember, truth is in the trend, patterns in the, uh, power is in the pattern. When you look at your numbers, you're looking at trends and patterns. That's it. Sure. And so when we see something that breaks that, we go, oh, that might be the thing. It's like, oh, that's interesting there. Google Organic maybe didn't create a lot of awareness. Maybe it was that LinkedIn. What happened? Oh, somebody posted our page on LinkedIn. And you know, like we had Google Analytics that picked up something and tweeted it out. So you do see these unexpected wins, but you really see them because you're looking for, is it working like it's supposed to? And then tying it to, again, going back to the example of the goals, aware, complete, and engage along the way. When it comes to what you do, like Google Analytics stuff, do you just use the core Google Analytics or do you have any other fancy tools that help you make so the stuff around it more efficient? Oh yeah, measurement. When it comes to measurement marketing, so there's three. Everybody should eventually move into, and they will, pretty quickly you will. If you're just starting out, use Google Analytics. Yes. Because it collects information, it stores that information, it builds reports based on information, at least basic reports. You can get something. And we're big believers in get good enough to get going, right? Don't and worry about free. the fancy stuff. It's <laughs> free, right? Use that for sure. Next is Google has created other tools that do some of those things better. So analytics is really, as we mentioned earlier, it's really built to store behaviors that are happening on your site. That is its sweet spot. It's what it does incredibly well. It collects data, but it doesn't really do the best job at that. And it does do reports, but if anybody's been to analytics reports, they can be a little confusing sometimes. So it doesn't really do a great job in reports. So Google created two other platforms that do that. So Tag Manager, Google Tag Manager is something that is built to collect behaviors. So you can answer even more detailed questions to your point, right? When you first get the first question, you then start asking the next level question and then the next level question. And so you might ask, well, how many people are seeing my pages? That's a super easy Google Analytics can answer that for you. It does it on its own to know how many people watched 50% of my video and scrolled halfway down. Well, now you got to have Tag Manager, right? Because it, it can help you measure that sort of behavior, send that information to Google Analytics. And then you have Google Data Studio, and that's what we talked about earlier, that builds dashboards and reports, and that's where it can look like a nice little journey and a funnel. Most of my reports, I'm not a big believer in analyzing reports. I think if you're staring at a report more than five minutes, it's too complicated. You, we have more important things to do as marketers. So yes. our job is to go in there, look at the information, and go back to work. Right. Yes. Like when you look at your car and you're driving, you see your speedometer, you, you know, immediately I either hit the gas or hit the brake just because you looked at it. The mere interaction caused the result to happen, caused the action. Right. That's how a marketer's dashboard should be, because none of us have time to, to look at that stuff. Sure. So Data Studio can create that and have a nice little journey. So those three tools work incredibly well together. Tag Manager, Google Analytics and Data Studio. And they're free.